One recurring theme in the nightmare of the 41st millennium is that of individual irrelevancy. Existing as a citizen of the Imperium does not grant you many, if any, of the rights and freedoms that we would expect, nor that we have come to regard as being the norm for human civilizations now or commonly in our imagined fictional futures. Within the Imperium of Man on many worlds, you will be little more than an uneducated peasant drone carrying out menial tasks until your body is little more than organic matter fails and you're sent off for processing to become either corpse starch or for your body to be used in some other industrial process. This is the fairly standard order of things, and as is often said, in the 41st millennium, the singular truth is that whatever happens, you will not be missed. With this in mind, it's why the Mechanicus, for example, as we have previously discussed, place little if any value on human individuals. You are little more than an organic machine to the Mechanicus, and concepts like suffering or having individual rights mean absolutely nothing. So if you happen to be required for use by the Mechanicus without some kind of intervention, you're going to be used in that way. But still, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be dragging people off the streets, because the organisations of the Imperium, after all, do still want to protect and provide for law-abiding and obedient citizens. There's no need to be repurposing them when you have an almost limitless supply of heretics and criminals. The many dissident citizens who may have, through their own aspirations or otherwise been corrupted, somehow fallen through the cracks and then been judged for their crimes. Now, if you were lucky, you might simply be executed outright. This is always going to be the more preferable option in the Imperium. However, more often, there is always a need to fill the ranks of the penal legions or simply forced labour for whatever the Imperium requires. And so you may be assigned to one of these forces, where your ultimate fate will still be that of a likely harrowing death some point in the very near future. There are though, as we know, many other unpleasant fates for those who don't keep their colouring inside the lines as an Imperial citizen. Servitor conversion being the most commonly noted, whereby you'll have your mind wiped and become a machine hybrid tasked with menial servitude or some other task, which during earlier points in human history would have been carried out by an AI. They instead rely on bizarre hybrids of man and machine to fulfil roles that leave the unfortunate souls, mind wiped or not, assigned to such a fate as pitiful parodies of humanity. The Ecclesiarchy, otherwise known as the Adeptus Ministorum, tend to lean in on these kind of alternative punishments for good reason, because although the opportunity for a good display of the Emperor's will by means of a public execution, purging by fire and so on, is never going to be passed up, but when it comes to heretics, they have an array of options by which they can inflict appalling torture upon those who would dare to go against the holy truth of the Imperial cult. Whatever the method, the aim is to expunge their heretical sins so that they may strengthen the Emperor when they die and not empower the darker aspects of the warp, or that is their belief anyway. This rationale is not something that I feel is often appreciated in terms of the reasoning for punishments for heretics. It's not arbitrary or senseless. The belief is that the more extravagant the purging, the more traumatic, then the more effective it's going to be. And this includes self-explanatory punishments like the rat pit, and more vague, but use your imagination, skin purging, death masking, and of course, arco-flagellation. Now, in truth, of course, we know it's more likely that these are probably counterproductive and their suffering actually has a far more negative impact than whatever is believed to happen when these poor souls actually die. Arcoflagellation is actually a more complex means of purging the heretic than most other methods, which are usually a comparatively fast death. Anyone sentenced to arcoflagellation would be right to try and avoid it at all costs, which would of course be near impossible. The process is designed to not simply punish and kill the unwilling heretic, but it physically will alter them and turn them into a weapon for the ecclesiarchy and a powerful weapon at that. Those selected for arcoflagellation will undergo extensive physical surgery, usually administered by a member of the Mechanicus, as well as mental reprogramming and conditioning to turn them from free-thinking humans into servitor war machines, essentially berserker servitors. The most extreme part of the surgery is usually focused around the arms. Their hands will often either be fully amputated, often as far up as the elbow, or the hands are split open to allow grafting of electrically charged flails to be embedded and secured as part of their body's structure. They may also be implanted with claws, swords or pneumatics. 
Flails though are the most common preference. Their by now usually fairly ruined bodies will then be fitted with a pacification helmet, and this connects directly into the brain and spinal cord and it sets the guilty person in a state of passive calm and limited conscious awareness. It will of course, like most servitors, already have been mind wiped, again how effective that is, is open to your own interpretation. Their dulled mind will be continually then bombarded with holy images, scripture, verses, pictures of saints, hymnals and prayers. Once an arco-flagellant has been created, they're stored in this vegetative state, left to burble and drool as they sit in storage areas, intravenously fed basic nutrients, awaiting a time where they will be required. They will retain basic motor functions so that they're able to shufflingly move from one place to another while still in this passive state, or simply perhaps they're rolled around on a wheeled platform. They will respond to verbal commands of a controlling ecclesiarchy or designated inquisitor or sister of battle so that they're able to follow along while moving from one place to another or on infiltration trading operations. When actually required for combat, the pacification helm can be easily deactivated by means of a trigger word which can be given either verbally or psychically through telepathic means. So you might say that when they're instructed to go berserk, the arcoflagellants are quite literally triggered. The previously passive cyborg becomes a frightening and fearless combatant that exists only to destroy everything it sees. Once unleashed, the arco-flagellant is near to unstoppable. Their bodies are dotted with embedded combat stimulants such as barrage, friends on slot and spur, which continually pump them with what are essentially a mixture of stamina and awareness boosters, painkillers and adrenaline, leaving them unable to feel or sense much of anything. Nothing short of complete physical destruction will stop an arco-flagellant. Their brain patterns are regulated once triggered, so they become a pure distillation of psychopathic rage. They're lashing, flaying creatures of death, insatiable, unstoppable, unfeeling, unthinking. They'll run head on into enemies regardless of the threat and heaven help anyone caught in close quarters as they will flail any target close to them into absolute bloody oblivion. The Ecclesiarchy hold no consideration for the survival of arco-flagellant units. They are very much designed by their nature as suicide units. They are far from what you would consider a subtle weapon and are lauded by the more bloodthirsty inquisitors for the sheer terror they can induce, even if that means allowing for some collateral damage of innocence. For while the control of an arco-flagellant can mark nearby units as friendly, which would then be ignored by the flagellant, any innocents who happen to run into it by unfortunate chance would be indiscriminately lashed to pieces. Inquisitors may wish to use arco-flagellants, especially in close-quarter environments of, say, a hive city, where they may encounter gang forces, cults and general bands of undesirables who do not appreciate the presence of an Inquisitor. Arco-flagellants are ideal for such places, close-quarter, often poorly equipped individuals with weak personal armour, an unleashed arco-flagellant can inflict appalling damage and is a significant force multiplier for any soul inquisitor descending into the darkness of the lower levels of human civilization. The Ministorum, while often considerate of an Inquisitor's request for an Arco-Flagellant, will be suspicious of those who are part of any of the more radical factions of the Inquisition. They would far prefer to hand over Arco-Flagellants to the more even-handed Puritan members of the Inquisition. Now, within the law, there exists only two real accounts of Arco-Flagellants, noted by name. The first is Damien 1427, his true name expunged, deleted and acid washed from Imperial records. He was by all accounts once an itinerant peddler on the world of Silurian 4 until he was caught in a rock slide. After this disastrous event he began to hallucinate that he had visitations from the Emperor. He gathered a mob about him in the wilderness, a gang of outlaws, malcontents and mutants. Eventually he defied the will of the Cardinal of Siluria, speaking out against Governor Tyron Rex. Silurian Arbiti's security forces put down the rebellion and handed the iconoclast over to the Cardinal, who passed upon him the judgement of arco-flagellation. The second named individual is Simeon 38X, formerly Erin Octavus, a Grox meat farmer, that's a large reptile, and a native of the agri-world known as Standalone. Octavus was a sufferer of the Gathalamor syndrome, a condition in which subjects became determined to sacrifice themselves in the name of the Emperor. Octavus believed he was tainted by evil, 
Several attempts were made to placate and purge the farmer, but these failed, and Octavus, spurred on by his hallucinations, would proceed to attack Cardinal Simeon, for which he was tried and sentenced to arco-flagellation. Octavus then named as Simeon 38X after the cardinal that condemned him still suffered from the Gethalamor syndrome. It was speculated that his pacifier helmet actually worsened this condition, which resulted in him not always even responding to his trigger word. On a number of occasions this resulted in bloody consequences, most notably during his service to Inquisitor Steinbeck. Following the grisly death of several members of the Ecclesiarchy, Simeon was almost terminated. Witch hunter Tyrus intervened, granting him a stay of execution. Simeon was given a retrial and sentenced to death masking. After this he was held in stasis aboard Tyrus' own vessel, where he would remain as a ready instrument to be unleashed leashed upon the witch hunter's most hated foes. Incidentally, I've never found it particularly elaborated on exactly what death masking actually is within 40k that I have discovered so far anyway. Obvious comparisons can be made to various tortures of the medieval and inquisitional periods of human history, and they all usually involve some horrific means of pressure application, heated liquids or various degrees of laceration, so basically use your imagination, it's probably not far off simply having your head put in a huge vice. The arcoflagellant represents the extreme nature of humanity's religious rationalisation in the 41st millennium. Despite being a highly advanced civilization capable of interstellar travel, cities that reach into the skies of their worlds housing billions of individuals, armies that are capable of destroying entire worlds at the push of a button, and advanced genetic manipulation to produce the ultimate soldiers. And yet despite its strength and some of its more recent forward-moving achievements, it simultaneously has regressed into the ethical dark ages punishing individuals in the cruelest ways imaginable, all in the name of fear and the fanatical devout worship of a man who actively fought to discourage and reprimand such behaviours. The arco-flagellant, while impressively brutal, is a miserable distillation of mankind's combined ignorance, fear and cruelty. So keeping this in mind, it is perhaps perfectly fitting that they are one of the weapons of the Adeptus Ministorum. <laughs>